Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Sam Dubé. I'm here to talk to you today about heel spurs, the symptoms, the underlying cause, and the benefits of different treatment options. The signs and symptoms of heel spurs are calcium deposits on the underside of the heel bone that cause a bony protrusion and, although heel spurs are often painless, there may be pain under the middle of the heel for a prolonged time, sometimes even years. These symptoms may indicate that an original condition of plantar fasciitis has likely become a heel spur. What causes heel spurs? Our feet have a thick, fibrous band of tissue called the plantar fascia, which connects our heel bones to the balls of our feet. The plantar fascia stretches and strains when the muscles that form and maintain the arch system of the feet don't work efficiently. When this happens, the arches can't safely manage the vertical forces that are generated by our body weight. As a result, our arches collapse, creating a stress and strain on the plantar fascia. Heel spurs occur when that tissue is continually strained over time and calcium deposits form a bony protrusion on the underside of the heel bone. For proper function, our feet require the right stimulus and the right movement. Right stimulus consists of the subtle varied stimulus that the soles of our feet receive when we walk, especially when we walk barefoot on natural terrain. With each step, there are subtly different sensations. These subtle differences in stimulus keep our brain on high alert so that our body's protective reflexes function properly with optimal muscle function. When our brain is uncertain about what will happen, it triggers protective reflex muscle activations that support our arches even before our feet contact the ground. This ensures that our feet and legs can safely manage the forces generated by the activity intensity of our bodies. As activity-related stimulus intensifies, a progressively higher arch is created. That's why, when they're functioning properly, our arches and toes rise and fall dynamically in response to the varying activity stimulus intensities. This uninhibited dynamic movement is right movement. Right stimulus and right movement prevent imbalanced muscle function that contributes to collapsing arches and stresses on the plantar fascia, all of which lead to the formation of heel spurs. Conventional footwear impairs optimal foot function in two ways. First, most conventional footwear dampens right stimulus. This is particularly true for shoes or insoles that support or cushion our feet. They spread the forces evenly across the soles of our feet, creating sensory input that's muted and repetitive, step after step. Within a short period of time, our brain tunes out the stimulus and stops responding to it. As a result, our brain doesn't sufficiently activate the muscles that stabilize our arches and properly align our feet, legs, hips, and lower back before our feet contact the ground. This tuned out brain response is actually natural. It happens all the time. The same thing happens when we walk into a room and first smell the coffee or the bacon. After a few minutes, we don't notice the smell at all anymore. Second, most conventional footwear, especially footwear that's tightly laced, has snug toe boxes or stiff midsoles or outsoles, restricts the right movement dynamic raising of the arches and toes that's so critical in the creation of a strong, stable arch system and that healthy linear propulsion with the toe off forces spread across the forefoot. Conventional treatment methods for heel spurs include the following. Cushioning products, therapy to eliminate damage and heal the plantar fascia, supportive products such as orthotics, ice, and surgery. Now, while these methods may temporarily alleviate symptoms, they don't address the poor neuromuscular function that is the cause of the problem. In fact, the more we artificially support or cushion our feet, the weaker and the more dependent we become on these types of products. Now these old school support and cushioning treatment methods 
are not recommended in any other area of musculoskeletal medicine as a viable long-term treatment option. In fact, today's modern treatment methods for poor neuromuscular function focus on increasing mobility, muscle strength, and proper alignment via proper technique exercise, which requires both right stimulus and right movement. Science has shown that simply challenging the body to do its job is the best way to restore and enhance function. This principle is the foundation for virtually all of today's sports training and rehabilitation programs. To address the poor neuromuscular function that causes heel spurs and prevents them from recurring, I recommend the following. Walking barefoot on natural terrain as much as possible. This provides the optimal right stimulus and allows for the right movement required for healthy neuromuscular function. To obtain right stimulus in your conventional footwear, use Biopod Stim Soles. For best results in conventional footwear, use Biopod Stim Soles in loosely laced, soft, flexible footwear that allows your arches and toes to rise easily. For optimal neuromuscular function while wearing shoes, Use Biopods footwear, which are specifically designed to provide the right stimulus and facilitate the right movement that optimize and encourage healthy foot, leg, hip, and back function. Now always remember, consult with your healthcare practitioner and ask them about employing soft tissue mobilization therapies to address the fibrotic scar tissue that may have formed in the past.